Hi everyone, this is AJ and welcome back to the channel and welcome to a new episode of my weekly watch roundup where I have a take a look at all those things that I've been watching over the past week, the TV, the film and give you a sort of short thoughts um, on them. Yeah, instead of full on reviews. Um, there's quite a bit actually this week so let's dive straight into it. Let's do it. Okay, yeah, so it's been a bit of a busy week, really, for me watching <laughs> TV and films. Um, I've actually amassed one, two, three, nine films. Wow, nine films. Um, that's not including the TV. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump into TV first, because that's a short section, and then jump into the movies that I've watched over the past seven days. So without further ado, let's just jump into the TV. Okay, so what have I been watching this week? Um, it's been quite a busy week. Um, Star Trek, Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Now, I do review this series on a weekly basis. Um, and we had an episode here where the crew were in space dock, essentially, a bit of R&R. &R. A lighter episode, um, you know, touching themes of, of uh, body swapping and all this sort of thing. And all the crew were off doing their own separate things, basically. Um, it was a lighter episode. It was more of a humorous episode. And you know what I mean, body swapping, where two people swap over one another's identities, this sort of thing. Um, yeah, so but a still a very strong episode, a, a, a great episode. And this is five episodes in. And each episode has been strong, in my opinion. And I'm really enjoying this Star Trek series, which is fantastic. Um, next up was Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi, episode three. Halfway through the series already, can you believe that? Again, I've reviewed this one solely on its own, so you can go and check that out. Another strong Obi-Wan Kenobi episode, in my opinion. I really did enjoy it. There was a lot of Darth Vader in this episode. Um, the young girl who plays Leia is still very, very good. You know, Obi-Wan Kenobi stepping back into this role, fantastic. Um, sorry, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Ewan McGregor stepping back into the role of Obi-Wan Kenobi, just fantastic. He's, you know, I... I, I I truly am enjoying this Star, um, Star Wars series. It's really good. Keeping on that sci-fi front was the Orville. We've had a new episode of the Orville drop. This is season one, um, sorry, season three, episode one. Orville, New Horizons, new title. Can you believe it's been three years since the last episode of the Orville? Um, I don't know if you watch this show or not, obviously, but it's it's a good sort of Star Trek esque type of a show, uh, more in line with what Star Trek was. Um, however. You know, this episode did run for over an hour. It didn't feel like a season opener. It felt like it should have come sort of a few episodes in. Um, some of the cast had nothing to do in this episode whatsoever. And the humour within the show has been decreased somewhat and to make it a bit more um, uh, serious, which is a shame because that, that made it stand apart. But... Nevertheless, again, I've done an episode, I've done a review for that episode, and I'll be reviewing that on a weekly basis. So you can go and do that. Now, the boys started again. We had three episodes of the boys drop, and now they're going to be weekly after that. Um, I've watched episode one and two. Um, I just ain't be able to fit episode three in, but fantastic to have the boys back. It's fantastic to see they've managed to get Charlize Theron to do a cameo appearance, Billy Zane to do a cameo appearance. Fantastic stuff. Now, this show it just goes from strength to strength. It's based on a comic book um, series written by Garth Ennis, who in the early 2000s was a, a writer who brought back the Punisher into the mainstay and into the public eye um, and the 2004 film was partly based on some of his work on the comic books but the boys again this series just it it, it is uh, it's just so it feels fresh you know it looks like it's highly quotable some of the lines used in it Carl Urban he's fantastic in it Jack Quaid son of Dennis Quaid very good in it the, the whole show is just it's just spot on so much they love exploding bodies in this show they love it body parts exploding people explode they love using like I don't know bags of stuff to explode over people I don't know what it is about it but they love it um, and I love it in turn great series so now that's it for the TV get that out of the way now we're here for the movies
Now, I didn't choose to watch some of these movies. The wife did. So I came home from work and she was in the process of watching Alien 3. So I caught Alien 3 on Disney+. Plus. So this is the theatrical cut of the film. Um, it looks lovely. It looked lovely on Disney+. Plus. Um, it really did. And, and this film gets a lot, a lot of hate. And I've never had an issue with it. I've never had an issue with Alien 3. Um, I understand why people dislike it. Um, it's a slower pace. It's, it's you know people want, what people wanted was another Aliens. When Alien Three came out, people were disappointed that it didn't go bigger than Aliens. It went back to a small scale personal story, one alien running around, people with no weapons. Um, but I really enjoy Alien Three. Yes, it's the weakest in in of the first original three, but I like how it caps off the story of Ripley, how it ends it. Um, and for me, it's, you know, it's got its issues, yes, and I understand why people dislike it. But for me, I've never had an issue with it as part of the original Alien trilogy. Following on from that was Alien Resurrection. Now, Alien Resurrection is a film that does annoy me. Um, aesthetically and tonally, it's completely different than the other three Alien films, whereas they do feel like they're set within the same world. Yes, this film is set far in the future, 200 years further in the future. Ripley's been cloned. Um, it's got some good ideas in it. It's got some really good ideas. Um, I didn't mind the cloning idea. Um, well, I do and I don't. I don't mind what they've done with it. Um, I didn't think they needed to bring Ripley back. Um, but it's, 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 it's one of those films where... The characters in it don't feel like real characters. They feel like caricatures of real characters. Um, you know, the military people don't feel like military personnel. They feel like actors playing a role. That's the problem I have with it. I can't get into the characters. Um, but, you know, it's got some good ideas. I like the ideas of people being used by for scientific experiments with the aliens. I like that sort of side, that shady side of it. These bodies being sort of essentially stolen while they're in cryo sleep to be awoken in front of an egg um the scene where the geezer has got the alien in him and he he, he holds the other geezer you know he's being shot at and he ends up holding the other geezer's head in front of him as it bursts out it bursts through that geezer's head killing him um the idea you know that that idea was 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 great where the um where he's getting shot but the adrenaline that he's feeling because this alien coming through him you know, and that sort of flight or fight survival instinct within the person makes him just unstoppable for that moment before he dies. Yeah, I thought that was great. There's a lot of good elements, good, good elements in a bad film. Um, yeah, but then leading on from that was Prometheus. Yes, we watched Prometheus as well. And it, oh, it seemed, I ain't seen it for a few years, but it seemed far worse, especially in light of Alien Covenant. Um, I come away with too many questions. It just makes no sense. It makes no sense. It, 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 I'm just left with too many questions in this film. Like, why does stuff happen? Why? How? How does this fit into the bigger alien universe? It just you're left with too much. Why? Why do we have to have origins of of the aliens? I don't want an origin of the alien. I don't need an origin of the alien. Let them be alien. Let them remain alien. Let them have a mystique to them. But we have to go in and we have to write have these stories for people where we destroy the mystique of something. And and when that's lost, it's, you know, and origins always amount to crap. How often has an origin film failed? All the time. I mean, yeah. You know, there might be one or two good ones out there that's the exception to the rule. Let me know if there are. Anyway, moving on from that. Grandchildren stayed over one night, so I had to watch something that was a bit sort of lighter. So I stuck Hong Kong versus Godzilla. Um, and I haven't seen this since it came out. Uh, and uh, it's, it's a fun, fun film. And it looks fabulous. Um, it's so colourful towards the end. Um, it's not a bad film. It's not a bad film. It's not a great film. It's not a bad film. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, then the missus wanted to watch Dark Shadows, the Johnny Depp film, you know, Tim Burton. Um, so we watched that. Fantastic cast in it. A little bit too long, um, but for the most part, it's pretty enjoyable. It's not a bad film whatsoever. There you go. Um, and then I jumped into Interceptor. Interceptor's this new sort of Netflix film. It's like Die Hard on a rig. Not an oil rig, but a rig in the sea that's like the last line of defence between um, Russia sending over nuclear weapons, nuclear bombs, and us, or the Americans, um, 
halt in those nuclear bombs, shall we say, shoot them out of the sky before they can hit, cause any damage. Um, and it's sort of like this, this terrorist group want to take out these installations that protect us, the last line of defence, interceptor stations they are, and, and one that's inland in the north has been taken out, and this one, and, and this girl on board, who's in real life is the wife of uh, Chris Hemsworth, Chris Hemsworth has a cameo in it, um, she has to die hard around and, and stop it. Only the film is very cheap. It's set it, for the first, first hour. It's all location set within a room and a corridor, essentially, with a, with a door between the two. Um, you know, the, 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 the rig looks like a model. The blue screen's evident, um, or green screen, whatever you want to call it. it you know what I mean? It, it's... It's one of them throwaway films that you can watch, you can have fun with, you know it's a die-hard rip-off, but ultimately you're like, yeah, all right, I won't ever watch that again. It was all right for 90 minutes, but there you go. Then I watched Top Gun, I did review this, the first Top Gun, um, very first viewing of Top Gun, and it was okay. It was okay, I've done a fantastic review, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, blow me on trumpet there. Um, I used an analogy to tell the story of it, worth checking out. Um, and then Top Gun 2, I went cinema to see Top Gun 2, the day after seeing Top Gun, me and the wife, we were out and about anyway, we had an Ikea trip planned, or she did, and I was dragged along, but then I went and saw Top Gun 2 with her, I said, let's go cinema, let's go see it, spare it a moment, so we did, and yes, it's up there as one of the best films of the year that I've seen thus far, it's, uh, it, it harks back to the first, it's very, very much... 80s feel to it, 80s action. Tom Cruise just shows why he is one of the last superstars alive. Um, now, I don't really like Tom Cruise in his younger youth. I never was a Tom Cruise fan, but I like older Tom Cruise. You know, you have these actors that you don't like, and then something happens, and you like them. And Tom Cruise is one of them for me. Didn't like him up to a point, and liked him, but I have struggled with his first stuff. Um, but there we go. But no, a thoroughly enjoyable film, worth seeing at the cinema. Um, you know, yes, all of it is, you know, minimal CGI in this film, minimal just CGI. They wanted it all done in camera, and for the majority of it, they got it done in camera, and it looks fantastic. And that brings me to my last film of the week, which I reviewed, um, Last Scene Alive, which is a film starring Gerard Butler, doing what Gerard Butler does best, a little bit of action. It's like a remake of the 1997 um uh, Kurt Russell movie breakdown thriller his wife goes missing um, she's kidnapped by someone he has to find out why or how what has gone on and try and rescue her and that's essentially the premise for this film but it's an enjoyable film it's an enjoyable enjoyable film it's not going to win any awards or any prizes you know it's Gerard Butler doing what Gerard Butler does best and it's an enjoyable romp that's all I can say an enjoyable film um um, and worth your time. And something that I would pick up on Blu-ray when it comes out. Um, I'd give it a rewatch. yeah. So anyway, so there you go. That was quite a list, really. So like I said, that was nine films um, and five episodes. Um, boy, it's been two episodes. Um, yeah, so quite a lot of time I've spent watching telly this week. I don't know where I found that time. Um, late nights, extended um, Jubilee weekend, um, yeah, all this sort of stuff and a bit of working from home. But there you go. Anyway, this is AJ. Um, thank you for watching uh, my short thoughts. Um, my weekly watch roundup. I'll be back next week, same time, same place, with what I've watched over the past week. And I'm sure it ain't going to be as extensive, extensive as this. If it is, then there is a problem. I'm going to have to review that problem. Yeah, but there you go. This is AJ. Again, leave me your thoughts in the comments down below. Let me know what you've been watching, whether you've seen any of the stuff, what you think of it. Um, hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. Take care all and goodbye.